Hello, hello everyone. Thank you for coming and clicking on this video. I just want to let you know real quick, the video you are about to watch is a pre-recorded video um, because I decided to take some time off to be with the Lord and also to just take a break from social media. So I will no longer be posting videos weekly. I will be posting one video monthly on the 15th of every month for the remainder of 2024. If you want to know my whole story on why I'm doing this, definitely go ahead and click the video right here that lays it all out for you. All right. Well, no more of this. Let's get to the video. Hey, what's up everybody? Thank you again for tuning in. I appreciate you. So in this video, we are going to talk about 10 things that you should not do during or before you go and take your exam. If you're like, Tamisha, what are these 10 things you're talking about? I must know them. I suggest you stay tuned and stay locked in because I'm going to talk about it right now. All right, guys, so here are the 10 tips I'm going to give you. So the first tip is this. Do not take the exam cold. Yes, do not go and take it. Now, this is the thing. Now, I should say this only applies, obviously, if it's cold outside. But what I want to say is even if it's summer and it's hot, sometimes they might be booming that A that AC. So make sure that you come prepared with proper attire, all right? So I'm gonna say it like this. If it's cold, obviously, right? You wanna make sure that you have um, proper attire where you're comfortable and you're not like in the exam and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm freezing, right? Or if it's gonna be hot, expect that AC is gonna be booming. So something that people just don't think about but it's going to make a difference because you might be thinking about oh dang it's it's cold in here and that's a distraction and we don't want anything to distract you so first tip is do not take the test cold all right second tip is this when you go to take your exam right and you're preparing do not review everything from your ot school you can't remember it all, all right? I know people like to memorize, and I know I talk about critical thinking and how to study, but honestly, guys, it's too much. It's just too much. So do not go through every single thing that you learned in OT school. Learn how to break things down. Learn how to have a structure and strategy to help you with your recall and your comprehension but just don't beat yourself up because you will not remember everything in your ot school and that leads me to tip number three do not cram the night before your exam all right i know it's tempting i know it's so tempting and you want to just look back at that textbook or go through more questions but just don't do it don't do it to yourself do not cram information because you're just not going to remember it because your anxiety level is going to be too high at that point. The night before, I always advise people, shut it down. Don't even look at it. Honestly, I tell people the day before your exam, don't even look at anything. It's either you know it or you don't at that point. All right. So tip number four, do not memorize practice questions. All right. People have been doing that, and I just, I, I guess I could see why, because you feel like maybe I'll see a question like it, but don't memorize practice test questions, because it doesn't mean that those same test questions is going to be on the exam, or really what you're doing is you're setting yourself up for failure, and you are not really uh, taking in the information you are just kind of putting it as a mask. How can I really explain this? When you are just memorizing a test question, you're just looking for that particular information, the way it's structured, right? 
But when you actually go deeper into the question, you become the coder, you visualize yourself in the scenario, you have a strategy to help you to remember when you're looking at looking at those questions, when you're looking at the rationale, it's just spark like, okay, I understand why I got this wrong. So when I see another question like it, I'm going to understand these key little points and components that popped into my mind as I was reading the question, as I was reading the rationale. So it's really learning how to study those questions versus simply just trying to memorize those questions. And if you're like, man, I wish it was like a system or something that can show me how to study test questions the right way, then definitely get your hands on my study with a code of course where in the first week we talk about all of that. All right. Tip number five. So I know this is hard because I'm not a person who really suffers from this, but I know some people really do have a diagnosis of anxiety. And then some people just have really bad anxiety and it's not diagnosed or anything. It's just they have testers anxiety. So I want to let you know that you really need to not allow it to get to you. Okay, because it's going to take the focus off of what you should be focusing on, which is getting a good night's rest, which is uh, staying positive, speaking positive, believing in yourself, right? So you really want to make sure that you tame that anxiety. And how can you tame that? tame that anxiety is by actually not the day before or night before, but right before you say, okay, I'm done studying, set up a, I want to say stimulation, all right, a simulation of you actually sitting at your laptop with 200 questions, okay, and you put your timer on and you go through and you take those questions, you, you go through them just like if you were at the testing center. And by doing that and doing it a little more frequently, it's going to help to bring down that anxiety because you're actually preparing your mind with a level of expectation. Okay. So definitely don't let anxiety hold you down. All right. So number six, okay, is this, you need to make sure that you're finishing your exam. You want to make sure that if you're taking um, test questions for practice, um, that you are properly going through them and make sure that when you are taking your exam, that you are answering every question. You know, you want to make sure that you are finishing. So again, this is why I talk so much on my channel about having a strategy and having structure and having a plan because the last thing you want is to be sitting there only to realize that you still have 15 more questions to go and you're only down to like 10 minutes, right? You don't want that. So definitely make sure that you're answering all of the questions. Number seven. So tip number seven is this, guys, and we really, really got to stop doing this to ourselves. We have to stop talking negative, negative, neg negative, negative self-talk is no good. It's no good. And you have to throw that out the window. I know sometimes it's tempting to say, well, I'm just a bad test taker or I suffer from anxiety or I just don't understand. Are they trying to trick us? Or this exam is too hard. I don't understand how people are able to pass this exam. Like all of this stuff, and I've heard it, I'm telling you, I've heard so many different negative talk. We really have to stop, stop doing it. And you got to remind yourself, you went through school, right? First of all, there's some programs that you have to test to get into the program, right? So you got into a program, you went through the whole entire program, then you went on your clinicals and passed your clinicals, right? You passed your field work, then you graduated. So you went through all of this, this whole process. So you are equipped. You just need to one, believe in yourself, two, learn how to study. I feel like a lot of times when I come across people, they don't know how to study. And it's like, how did you go through 
all this time through school and you still don't understand how to study. So that is so important. And not to worry, if you're somebody like, yeah, Tamija, that was a tough pill to swallow, but I really don't know how to study. Don't worry about it. Study with a quota course. I laid all out for you in week one. Plus you have the private Facebook group that you can jump into to ask questions and just be a part of the community. All right, so not to worry, I got you covered. Now, tip number eight. Tip number eight is this. Guys, we gotta stop going bed late. We gotta stop going to bed late the night before the exam. I know that sometimes it's hard to sleep, um, but you gotta do whatever you can do to try to get rest. I always tell people, it is best to take the exam when your mind is at its freshest when your mind is at its most clearest point. For me, I like to take tests in the morning because I just wake up. There's not a whole bunch of distractions happening. There's not a whole bunch of things pulling for my attention and my time, you know, and I can just go and get it done. That's me. That might not be you. You might be an afternoon person and that's when you want to take your exam but you got to make sure you're getting some sleep before you go for this exam and also side note to that if you are sick reschedule the exam cancel it don't go right do not go if you don't feel like you are in your right mind now that's not saying that because you're having anxiety everybody's going to have anxiety we all have some level of anxiety but it should not be to the point where it's crippling all right so that is tip number eight. Tip number nine, okay? And again, I feel like with this tip, it's often overlooked, but it's so important. Please do not go and take the MBCOT exam hungry, all right? You don't want to do it because, again, it's going to be a distraction. You're going to be thinking about food. You're going to be thinking about you know, when's going to be what I'm going to have for my next meal. You just want to make sure that you eat a balanced meal. Obviously, make sure you eat enough, but don't eat too much because then if you eat too much, you're going to make yourself feel tired, right? You might start losing focus. Like, make sure, like, these are like the small things, but they make a big difference. Make sure that you plan exactly what you're going to have. If you're going in the morning, make sure you plan exactly what you're going to have in the morning that is nutritious and that means don't get anything that is high in sugar okay you just want to be comfortable all right just be comfortable <laughs> i'm not going to tell you what to eat you know yourself better than me but just be comfortable all right and the final final tip tip number 10 is this Spending more time on things that you are comfortable with and you understand versus spending time on topics that is challenging, right? What do I mean by this? I mean that if you're a person that you are really strong in physics and geriatric content, but you are really weak in pediatrics and you find yourself studying a whole bunch of stuff about diagnoses and physics stuff and cardiac and you're not spending enough time on pediatrics you are going to set yourself up for a disaster it's tempting and it's comfortable to learn and go over things that you feel like you really understand but you really need to flip that on its head and spend more time on things that is going to be more challenging for you so you can lock it in and then you go to the things that you're a little bit more weaker on. So guys, that is my 10 tips for you. I hope that these tips were helpful. I hope that you take it into account. If you are in need of structure in a study guide, definitely go ahead, look into my description below for my study with the quota course. If you just want to be a part of the community, come on over to study with a quota Facebook group. It is free. And until next time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye-bye.